Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at applications of the time value of money, part two. This topic is covered in introductory financial accounting courses, as well as intermediate accounting, managerial accounting, as well as corporate finance or introduction to finance. Also covered on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my courses, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe, put them in playlist, connect with me on Instagram. If these lectures are helping you, it means they might help other people, so share the wealth. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources and supplementary material that's going to help you succeed in your accounting education as well as your CPA exam. I strongly suggest you visit my website. For this recording, you will need the time value of money concept as a prerequisite. The link for those sessions are in the description, is in the description below. Make sure to check it out in case you are not familiar with the concept of the time value of money. So let's take a look at part two. This is part two. I already worked part one. So if you're not sure, look in the description. You can see part one if you're interested in practicing those exercises. So let's look at part two. In part two, also a series of questions that's going to illustrate the time value of money. Let's take a look at the first question. For each of the following situ situation, identify whether the case is either a present value or future value a single amount or an annuity. The table you would use in your computation, but do not solve. I'm gonna go ahead and solve <coughs> anyhow, sorry. And the interest rate time period you would use. So basically we're gonna go over each one of them and solve it anyhow, okay? Let's uh, let's look at A. You need to accumulate $10,000 for a trip you, you wish to take in four years. Hopefully the coronavirus will be done by that time. You are able to earn 8% compounded semi-annually on your savings. Excellent. So the first thing I know is the interest rate is 8%. Since it's compounded semi-annually, it's 4%. So I equal to 4%. You plan to make one deposit and let the money accumulate for four years. So this is, you're only making a single deposit. So we are looking at a single amount, one amount. How would you determine the amount of one deposit? Well, so you need 10,000. You need 10,000. How much do you need to invest today? And you can invest this money for the I is compounded semi annually, which is 4%. And the N, they say for four years, four years is eight periods. So four years is eight periods because you're going to be that money, it's going to it's going to accumulate every six months. So how much money you, you will deposit today? And I'll have to make the, I'm gonna have to show you the computation, although they don't, they don't show you this. Well, how would you do so easy? I'm gonna take my amount, go to my present value of a dollar amount, I equal to four, N equal to eight, N equal to eight, and the factor is 7,300, 307. So if I take 10,000 times 0 0.7307, I should get $7,307. So today I should invest $7,307. Now I'm going to have to show you the computation for sure because I want to show you how the compounding work. So let's go to the Excel sheet. So my answer was $7,307. Now what I said is this. I'm going to have period one, period two. I'm going to have, remember I said I'm going to have eight periods. And each period, because it's four years, but semi-annually eight periods, and I equal to 4%. So here's what's going to happen. This money, the 7,307, after six months later, it's going to grow at 1.04. It's going to grow at 4%. Then I'm just going to drag the formula. That's basically what I'm going to be doing. Six months later, it will grow to 7,903, the previous amount times one plus 0.4. And if I drag it all the way, notice the amount is $10,000. So notice, because it's compounded semi, this is compounded semi-annually. See, I will need today $7,307. 
So what I did, simply put, what I did is I used my present value table to figure it out, to figure it out. Now, what I, what else I can do, I can take the 10,000, I can take the 10,000 and go to my future value table. I can go to my future value table. Um, I equal to 4% and equal to 8 and it's 1.368 so if I take my 10,000 10, let's do the math and I divide 10,000 by 1.3686 that's going to give me $7,306 that's fine that's good enough for me notice it's the same answer so I could use either the present value table or the future value table I would use the present value because they're giving me the future value. I'd like to use the present value, but you could use both. Remember, they're the reciprocal of each other. This is what I talked about in the discussion. Now, let's take a look at part B. Assume the same fact in part A, except that you will make semi-annual deposit to your savings account. So simply put, in part A, we said if you deposit $7,307, you would receive $10,000. Now, what happened? In part B. In part B saying, let's assume you're going to be making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to be making eight payments, eight payments to get to $10,000. How would you find out what's your payment? Here we are dealing with N equal to same thing as the part A. N equal to 8, it's 4 years, but it's semi-annual, I equal to 4%. We know that from, if we take the payment, once we find the payment times the factor, that's going to give us the future value. We don't know the payment, payment is the X. Can we find the factor? Sure we can. This is a future value problem. When you go to the future value annuity table, future value annuity table, and in this problem, we have n equal to 8, 8 periods at 4%, and the factor is 9.2142. So the factor is 9.2142. So let's go ahead. And 9.2142, that's going to give us $10,000. Now, if we solve for x, 10000 divided by the factor 9.2142, it's going to give us a payment approximately $85, uh, $1,085. Now, the best way to, to prove this is also to show you on an Excel sheet. So let's go ahead and do so. So remember, in the prior problem, we needed $7,003. Now, let's take a look at this. So we're going to have eight payments, and we're going to be adding payments to the balance payment plus balance and uh, we're going to have the interest rate of 4% the interest rate is 4% and we're going to have the balance a column for the balance so let's do this and see if indeed $1,085 will get us where we need to do will get us where we need to get which is $10,000 so we have payment one payment two we have eight payments so I'm just doing the math proof just to kind of show you it is what it is. First, I have 1,085 and 25 cent, 28 cent to be more specific. This money is going to grow at 4%. Oops, 4%. So I'm going to I'm going to be making the first payment 6 months later. It's going to it's going to grow at 6% and it's going to grow to be this amount times 1 plus 4%. Remember, I need my original amount. It's going to grow to be 1,128. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, this balance and add to 1,085 six months later, and I'm going to let it grow also at 4%. And this amount, it's going to grow to be 2,302. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the formula. You guys see what, what I'm doing here. I'm going to drag the formula here. I'm going to drag the formula here and 4% it doesn't matter 0 0.04 or 4 and I'm gonna drag the formula here and if you notice if I keep adding 1085 let it grow at 4% add 1085 let it grow at 4% add 1085 after 8 payment I will have approximately 
$9,997, okay? So this is how we found the value of this, um, the payment, which is, the payment is, what, what they're asking us is for the payment. So I need to make a payment of approximately 1,085, eight payments, it will get me approximately 10,000. That's the other way. If I don't have 7,307 now, to invest all at once often people don't have the money they will save and now you find out exactly how much you will need to save for that hopefully you, this makes sense to you let's take a look at number c c as in charlie you want to retire after working 40 years with savings in excess of a million so your goal is to have a million you expect to save 4000 a year for 40 years and earn an annual rate of 8%. Will you able to retire with more than a million in 40 years? Well, basically, what are they asking us here? They're asking us, if you invest 4000 every year for 40 years and your money earning 8%, will you have a million dollars? That's your goal. So simply put on... Again, I like always I, I like to always show you this on a graph because hopefully it makes sense. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty. So you're going to be making 40. Each of these is 4,000. And if you make those $4,000 payment, will you have a million dollar if you invest this money at, at 8%? Well, how would I know? Well, I'm going to take 4,000. It's an annuity times the fu future value annuity n equal to 40 I equal to 8%. So 4,000 times that. So let me go to the future value and find out if I can do it or not. Let's see. Let's see. N equal to 40. I equal to 8%. So I'm going to take 4,000 times 259 and 0.05. 05, 05. Okay, so let's see if that's enough for me to retire. If I take 4,000 times 259.0505, and that's going to give me 1,036,000. Yes, I should be fine. 1 million, approximately 1,036,000. Yes, I should be fine. I should have my million dollars. So let's take a look at number D. A sweepstake agency names you names you a grand prize winner you can take 225 immediately now or elect to receive an annual installment of thirty thousand dollar for 20 20 years you can earn 10 percent which of these prices do you choose so here we are making a uh, we are making a an analysis a decision should we take the 225 now or should we take thirty thousand for the next 30 years so here's option one option one you don't need to do anything 225 option two I need to find thirty thousand dollar times the present value annuity factor n equal to 30 I'm, I'm sorry n equal to 20 I equal to 10 percent that's basically so so 225 versus if I wait and get this money later in thirty thousand would I uh, would I be better off? Very, pretty straightforward analysis in a sense. So let's take a look at it. So uh, the present value annuity factor, n equal to 20, i equal to 10. Present value annuity, I have n equal to 20, i equal to 10. And the factor is 8.5136. So 30,000 times 8.5136. Let's see if that is that is see which one is better. Thirty thousand times eight point five one three six. That's equal to two twenty five four zero eight. Practically the same. Two twenty five four zero eight. Uh, guess what? 
it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So simply put, if you take option one today, take 225 today, or wait to get 20, 30,000, assuming you can earn 8% on your 10%, uh, it's the, it doesn't matter. It, those are the same amount. So which choose the, the which price do you choose? I don't know which price do you choose. I'll take the two twenty five today. Or I don't know. I don't know. Ten percent is pretty good. Ten percent is if you know uh, because they, they're they're basically option two. They're guaranteeing ten percent. And I you know the the goal is can you get this money today? Can you get the two twenty five today and earn more than ten percent? So this is what basically boils down to can you make an investment where you could earn more than 10 percent if you can take option one if you cannot if you cannot find an investment whether it's in stocks bonds real estate start your own business deposit that money in the bank and 10 percent is pretty tempting okay um, i'm not sure i'm not really sure what i would do okay that's for you to decide congratulations for winning okay um as always um visit my website in the next recording, I'm thinking about looking at Excel sheet, showing you how to solve this problem in Excel sheet, uh, annuity problems, present values. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard, especially for your courses. Accounting is worth it. And stay safe during those coronavirus days.